Hi friends. Well, it's time to meet the sixth rainbow fairy. We've already met Ruby, Amber, Sunny, Fern, and Sky. And now in this story, we meet the sixth fairy, Inky. We only have one more to go after this. Let's quickly get caught up. The two girls are on vacation, Kirsty and Rachel. They have found some rainbow fairies that Jack Frost banished to Rainspell Island. He was mad because he wasn't invited to the Midsummer's Ball. The king and the queen tried to protect the fairies. They sent them off to Rainspell Island. Unfortunately, they all got separated. Luckily, two girls are on vacation and it's their mission to find all seven of the fairies so they can return all the color to fairyland, make it beautiful again. All right, we're ready to start our sixth story. This is the story of Inky, the Indigo Fairy. Chop, chop, lollipop. Get ready. We're ready for an adventure. Inky, the Indigo Fairy. Chapter one, a fairy tale beginning. Rain, rain, go away, Rachel Walker said with a sigh. Come again another day. She and her friend Kirsty Tate stared out of the attic window. Raindrops splashed against the glass and the sky was full of purplish black clouds. Isn't it a terrible day outside, Kirsty said, but it is nice and cozy in here. She looked around Rachel's small attic bedroom. There was just enough room for a brass bed with a patch, patchwork quilt, a comfy armchair, and an old bookshelf. But you know what the weather on Rainspell Island is like, Rachel pointed out. It could be hot and sunny very soon. Both girls had come to Rainspell Island on vacation. The walkers were staying in the mermaid cottage, while the Tates were in the dolphin cottage next door. Kirsty frowned. Yes, but what about Inky the Indigo Fairy, she said. We have to find her today. Rachel and Kirsty shared a wonderful secret. They were trying to find the seven rainbow fairies that had been cast out of Rainspell Island by that mean Jack Frost. Fairyland would be cold and gray until all seven fairies had been found again. Rachel thought about Ruby, Amber, Sunny, Fern, and Skye, who were all safe now in the pot at the end of the rainbow. Only Inky and Indigo, the Indigo Fairy, and Heather, the Violet Fairy, were left to find. But how could the girls look for them when they were stuck indoors? Remember what the fairy queen said, Rachel reminded Kirsty. Kirsty nodded. She said the magic would come to us. Suddenly, she looked scared. Maybe the rain is Jack Frost's magic. What if he's trying to stop us from finding Inky? Oh, no, Rachel said. Well, let's hope that the rain stops soon, but what should we do while we wait? Kirsty thought for a minute, and then she walked over to a bookshelf. It was filled with dusty old books that looked like they'd been there for a long time. She pulled one out. It was so big that Kirsty had to use two hands to hold it. The Big Book of Fairy Tales, Rachel read out loud, looking at the cover. Well, if we can't find fairies today, at least we can read about them, Kirsty grinned. The two girls sat down on the bed and pulled, put the book across their knees. Kirsty was about to turn the first page when Rachel gasped. Kirsty, look at the cover. It's purple, a really deep bluish purple. <gasps> That's indigo, Kirsty whispered. Rachel, do you think Inky could be trapped inside? Let's see, Rachel said. Hurry up, Kirsty, open the book. But Kirsty spotted something else. Rachel, she said, it's um glowing. Rachel looked more closely. Kirsty was right. Some pages in the middle of the book were shining with a soft bluish purple light. Kirsty opened the book. The ink on the pages was glowing in indigo, too, and for a minute, Kirsty thought that Inky might fly right out of the pages, but no, there was no sign of her. On the first page of the book was a picture of a wooden soldier, and above the picture were the words, the Nutcracker. Oh, Rachel said, I know this story. I went to see the ballet at Christmas. Well, what's it about? Kirsty asked. Well, there's a girl named Clara, and she gets a wooden Nutcracker soldier for Christmas, Rachel replied. He comes to life and takes her to the land of sweets. They looked at the book and saw the colorful picture of a Christmas tree. A little girl was asleep next to it, holding a wooden soldier. On the next page was a picture of snowflakes whirling and swirling through a dark forest. Ooh, aren't the pictures great, Kirsty said. That snow looks so real. Rachel frowned. For just a minute, she thought the snowflakes were moving. Gently, she put out her hand and touched the Page. It was cold and wet. Kirsty, 
she whispered. It, it, it is real. She held out her hand. There were white snowflakes on her fingers. Christy looked down at the books again with her eyes wide. Just then, the snowflakes started to swirl from the book's pages right into the bedroom. They moved slowly at first, and then faster and faster, and soon a snowstorm was so thick that Rachel and Christy couldn't see a thing, but they could feel themselves being swept up into the air by the spinning cloud of snow. Rachel yelled to Kirsty, Why haven't we hit the bedroom ceiling? Kirsty reached for Rachel's hand and held on tight. Because it's magic, she replied. The next chapter, chapter two, The Land of Sweets. Chapter two, The Land of Sweets. Suddenly, the snowflakes stopped swirling. Rachel and Kirsty found themselves standing in a forest with their backpacks at their feet. Tall trees towered around them and crisp white snow covered the ground. The girls certainly weren't in Rachel's bedroom anymore. Then Re Rachel realized where they were. Kirsty, this is the forest that was in the picture. Then she grabbed her friend's arm. We're inside the book. Kirsty looked frightened. Do you think Jack Frost brought us here, she asked, or his goblins? Jack Frost goblins were always trying to keep Rachel and Kirsty from finding the rainbow fairies. I don't know, Rachel replied. And then she frowned. There's something kind of strange about this snow. She bent down and gently touched the snowdrift. It isn't snow, Rachel laughed. It's powdered sugar. What? Kirsty looked amazed. She scooped up a handful and tasted it. The powdered sugar was cool and sweet. Maybe it isn't Jack Frost magic after all, Rachel said. What's that? Kirsty asked, pointing. Rachel could see a pink and gold glow coming through the trees. Mm, let's find out, she said. The girls picked up their backpacks and headed towards the glow. It was hard walking through the powdered sugar. Soon their sneakers were covered with powdery snow. Crack! Rachel jumped as a loud noise echoed through the woods. Sorry, said Kirsty. I stepped on a stick. Wait, Rachel whispered. I just heard voices. Do you think it's the goblins? Kirsty whispered back, looking scared again. Rachel listened. The voices were louder now. And then she sighed with relief. No, those sound too sweet to be goblin voices. Rachel and Kirsty hurried toward the edge of the forest. When they came out of the trees, they saw that the glow was coming from a beautiful pink and gold archway. Oh, look, Kirsty, Rachel gasped. It's made of candy. Kirsty stared. The archway was made of pink marshmallows and golden caramels. When the girls heard the voices again, and then they spun around, two people dressed in fluffy white coats were talking to each other and scooping powdered sugar into shiny metal buckets. They had round, rosy cheeks and small, pointy ears. They were so busy that they hadn't even noticed Rachel and Kirsty yet. I think they're elves, Kirsty whispered, but they're about the same size as we are. That means we must be fairy-sized again. We don't have wings this time, though, Rachel whispered back. Suddenly, one of the elves spotted them. She looked very surprised. Hello, she called. Oh, where did you come from? I'm Rachel. This is Kirsty, Rachel explained. We came through the forest. Where are we? Kirsty asked. This is the entrance to the land of sweets, said the first elf. My name is Wafer, and this is my sister, Cone. We're ice cream makers, added Cone. What are you doing here? Well, we're looking for Inky, the indigo fairy, Kirsty told them. Have you seen her? Both elves shook their head. We've heard of rainbow fairies, said Wafer, but fairyland is far away across the lemonade ocean. Maybe you should ask the sugar plum fairy for help. Cone said. She's so smart, she'll know what to do. She lives on the other side of the village. Could you take us to her? Kirsty asked eagerly. The elves nodded. Follow us, they said together. And then they led Rachel and Kirsty through the candy archway. On the other side of the arch, the sun shone down warmly from a bright blue sky. Flowers made the whip of whipped cream grew beneath chocolate trees. Squishy pink and white marshmallow houses lined the street, which were paved with jelly beans. Isn't this great? Kirsty laughed. It's like being inside a giant candy store. Oh, it all looks so yummy, Rachel agreed. There were elves everywhere. Some had shiny buckets like the ice cream makers, and others carried tiny silver hammers. There were gingerbread men, too, looking very stylish in their bright bow ties and chocolate buttons. And then a whole line of tiny wooden soldiers with polished black boots marched across the street in front of them, and Rachel spotted a sparkling pink sugar mouse scurrying beneath their feet. Kirsty and Rachel smiled at each other. Oh, what a fun place this was! The two elves led Rachel and Kirsty down the street. 
Suddenly, an angry-looking gingerbread man hurried out of one of the houses and bumped into Cone. Hello, Buttons, Wafer said. Why are you in a hurry? What's the matter, asked Cone. You look upset. The gingerbread man held out his hand. Look at my best bow tie, he said. It was red when I hung it out to dry, and now it's, it's this color. Rachel and Kirsty gasped. The bow tie was purplish blue. <gasps> Inky, they both said together. The ice cream elves looked confused. I think that means that Inky the Indigo Fairy is close by, Rachel explained. We'd better help you find her before she causes any more trouble, Cone said. And then she frowned as the little boy elf ran towards them. He had one hand on his mouth and he was laughing. Scoop, Wafer called. She turned to Rachel and Kirsty. That's our little brother, she explained. Scoop, what are you giggling about? Still laughing, Scoop took his hand away from his mouth. Rachel and Kirsty stared. The little elf's mouth was stained indigo. What happened? Cone gasped. Well, I had a drink from the lemonade fountain, Scoop said between giggles. All the lemonade is purplish blue color and it, it made my tongue tingle. That sounds like more rainbow fairy magic, said Kirsty. Where's the lemonade fountain, Rachel asked the elves. Um, in the village square, replied Cone, just around the corner. Thanks for your help, said Kirsty. She grabbed Rachel's hands and off they ran. As soon as Rachel and Kirsty turned around the corner, they skidded to a halt because there in the middle of the village square was a pretty fountain. Bright purplish blue liquid bubbled up from the fountain shaped like a dolphin. A crowd of elves, soldiers, and gingerbread men stood around the fountain and they were all talking at once and they sounded angry. A polka dotted jack-in-the-box jumped back and forth with a grumpy look on his face. A swirl of indigo fairy dust shot up out of the middle of the crowd. As the dust fell to the ground, it changed into blackberry-scented ink drops. Rachel and Kirsty stared at each other. Fairy dust could only mean one thing. They had found another rainbow fairy.